After thorough radiographic evaluation has been completed, the patient is placed in a beach chair position. A bolster is placed between the shoulder blades, allowing the injured shoulder girdle to retract posteriorly. Surgeons may choose between two incisions. Option 1 is a 3 cm to 5 cm transverse incision made inferior to the distal clavicle and AC joint. Option 2 is an incision along Langer's lines, running perpendicular to the long axis. The deltotrapezial fascia is sharply incised along the clavicle and the subperiosteal flaps are raised and protected for future deltotrapezial fascia repair. Bluntly dissect down to the superior bone surface of the coracoid. Identify the center of the coracoid on the superior cortex to avoid bone cutout and drill through the first cortex using the AccuCinch drill. The shoulder on the AccuCinch drill should help prevent drilling through the second cortex. Based on the patient's coracoid size and injury pattern, the surgeon has the ability to choose between one or two anchors at their discretion. The anchor is preassembled to the suture in the AccuCinch driver. Insert the anchor into the drill hole in the coracoid until the driver interface is barely visible. The shoulder on the AccuCinch driver will prevent inserting the anchor too deep. Release the suture from the handle and position the suture strands anteriorly for use after plate installation has been completed. Select the appropriately sized locking clavicle plate from the different lengths and curvatures provided in the system. The surgical technique from this point forward will highlight a locking distal clavicle plate utilizing eight 2.3 mm screws. Reduction of the fracture can be achieved provisionally by placing K-wires through the acromion or posterior scapula spine. Once the plate's ideal positioning has been achieved, it is provisionally stabilized to the clavicle with plate tacks. Under radiographic evaluation, place a 0.059 inch K-wire through the designated K-wire hole at the far distal end of the plate to ensure that the plate does not infringe upon the AC joint. For early stability, the first two screws placed should be medial and lateral to the fracture site. If bicortical screws are used, precautions should be taken to avoid overpenetration of the inferior cortex. The clavicle retractor should be placed under the inferior surface of the clavicle to protect the neurovascular structures from overpenetration when drilling. To insert the proximal screws along the shaft, assemble the driver to the driver handle. Using the 2.8 mm drill and drill guide, drill then measure for depth and place a 3.5 mm non-locking screw through the slots. 3.5 mm non-locking hex or hexalobe screws can be used in the slot. Based on the number of anchors, be sure to leave one or two of the compression slots located above the coracoid empty to allow for insertion of the suture retainers. When drilling the screw holes, use precaution to protect the suture from the drill bit. To insert the distal screws in the plate, begin by securing the plate to a distal fragment by inserting a 2.3 mm non-locking screw through the medialmost center hole. Place the 2.0 mm locking drill guide into the center hole and turn clockwise so that the guide fully threads into the plate. Insert the 2.0 mm drill and advance to the desired depth. Drill depth is determined by referencing where the laser mark on the drill aligns with the measurement on the 2.0 mm locking drill guide. Remove the drill guide and use the 1.5 mm driver tip with a cruciform driver handle to advance the 2.3 mm non-locking screw until the screw head fully engages the plate. The targeting guides are color-coded, blue and green, to match the corresponding left, blue, and right, green, plates. Slide the targeting guide over the K-wire and down onto the plate. The correct positioning of the targeting guide is achieved when the two pins on the bottom surface of the targeting guide engage the two suture holes, just proximal to the distal screw holes. For the remaining distal locking holes, place the 2.0 mm locking drill guide through the targeting guide and into the desired hole. This will hold the targeting guide flush to the plate. Insert the 2.0 mm drill and advance to the desired depth. Drill depth is determined by referencing where the laser mark on the drill aligns with the measurement 
on the 2.0 millimeter locking drill guide. When between sizes, it is recommended to choose the shorter screw option. Remove the locking drill guide and insert the proper length of screw through the targeting guide. To insert the 2.3 millimeter locking screws into the threaded holes, use the 1.5 millimeter hex driver with a cruciform driver handle. Advance the screw until the screw head fully engages the plate. Repeat these steps until a minimum of six screws have been fully inserted into the plate and bone. To drill all locking shaft holes, place the 2.8 millimeter locking drill guide into the desired hole until the guide fully threads into the plate. Insert the 2.8 millimeter drill to the desired depth. When between sizes, it is recommended to choose the shorter screw option. Remove the locking drill guide and insert the proper length 3.5 millimeter screw. Advance the screw until a head fully engages the plate. 3.5 millimeter locking hex or hexalobe screws can be used in the locking holes in the shaft of the plate. 3.5 millimeter non-locking hex or hexalobe screws can be used in the non-locking holes in the shaft of the plate. To drill the clavicle for the AccuCinch repair system, identify the slot to tie the suture above. If two anchors are used, be sure to keep these slots unfilled while inserting non-locking screws into the remaining compression slots. Using a 2.8 mm drill under power, center the drill in a slot and drill through both cortices of the clavicle. When drilling through the slots, use precaution to protect the suture from the drill bit and to avoid damage of neurovascular structures. Use a suture retriever to pull both suture strands superiorly from the anchor through one hole in the clavicle and through one plate slot. If two anchors are used, repeat suture passing with a second strand. Orient the suture retainer with a concave surface facing away from the plate. Pass the suture strand ends through the holes on the flat side of the suture retainer. Slide the suture retainer down into the plate slot to sit flush with the top surface of the plate. Be sure that the suture is not twisted prior to seating the retainer into the plate. After applying the proper amount of tension, secure the suture with a surgeon's knot and at least three additional reversing half hitches. A knot pusher may be required to apply the proper tension to the suture and to sit the knot down to achieve good knot security. This step completes the reduction and stabilization of the clavicle. Precautions should be taken when positioning the suture knot to avoid soft tissue irritation when closing the incision. Meticulous deltotrapezial fascia closure over the knot may help minimize skin irritation. An interoperative radiograph is recommended to check the position of the screws and the final reduction of the fracture. After radiographic evaluation and routine irrigation, the trapezial deltoid fascia is closed over the clavicle and AC joint, followed by closure of the subcutaneous tissue and skin.